faithful to us, God. We call out to you, you show up. We gather together, you show up. We set our heart or our mind on you, you show up. We read your word, you show up, God. We praise your name, you show up. Thank you, God. You never leave us, you never forsake us. The God of all creation has his eyes on us today. Lord, for those of us who didn't come up for prayer but might still be dealing with something, Lord, I ask that they would have the boldness to come up to myself, Pastor Jacob, any of the leadership, God, that we could bear one another's burdens as you've called us to. But God, let us go forth today from this moment and not just seek you when there's a crowd, but Lord, let us cultivate our own personal relationships with you, God, in the quiet time nobody else is around, God, let us be a people who seek your heart, God, so that we can be changed by you. In Jesus' mighty, holy, and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I know a lot of you have been seated, but if you'd like to get up and greet somebody that you didn't come to church with, we'd love that. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. If you're here with us at Grace Church for the first time or the first time in a while, we do have cards in the seat backs there. If you'd like to fill those out, uh, put your name and number on there. We'd like to meet with you, buy you coffee, buy you lunch, and get you connected to a local church here. And if anything else, we could sit and pray with you. And we're so happy you came to join us here to worship the Lord. Amen. 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 So, uh, <clears throat> been working on my pickup lines recently. <laughs> yeah, I, I told the girl, I said, uh, I think you gave me coronavirus. Because I can't stop staring at you. <clears throat> at, at you? Okay. At, at you? It's, okay. All right, moving on. Speaking of sick, we got a lot of sick stuff going on in the church this week. Amen? Amen. Sick in a good way for those of you who are kind of... Anyway, all right. Tonight we've got Sunday evening Bible study. That's at 6 p.m. with Pastor Annette Gardner. We're going through Colossians. We're in chapter 3 today. Man, there's, there's some power in, in what we're going to be going over. I can see the excitement on her face. So if you want to make it to a Sunday evening Bible study, I think this is the one. Amen? She's like, all of them are good, yeah, but I can see the, the, speci- the twinge in her eyes. She's ready to cu- go at it tonight. So that's tonight at 6 p.m. here at the church. We also have our Wednesday morning men's prayer. That's at 7 a.m. 
Men, if you would like to gather with us, pray for the church, pray for the community, and just lift up the name of God and see God move in power and might. We know that God does great things in small gatherings and people who are passionate about prayer. We're so thankful for the men of this church that gather and are faithful to pray. Amen? Amen. And then we also have our corporate prayer later that night, and that's at 6.30 p.m. And that's the, the whole body getting together, really pressing in. And we've had a lot of church needs. So if you have any needs, we've been praying for you. If you told pastor or anybody else, hey, I've got something I need prayer for, man, we, lift, we lifted up a ton of needs on Wednesday night. So if you have things you need prayed for, we want to be faithful to lift those things up for you because that's what we're here for, community Prayer, praying for one another, lifting up, interceding, fighting for one another is the body of Christ. That's at 6.30 on Wednesday. And then also we've got our woe flow. It's coming back. Amen. Amen. It's going to be the last Friday of this month. I don't have my calendar on me. So whatever the last Friday of this month is, that's when we're doing woe flow. 7 p.m. We're looking forward to that. If you're like, what's woe flow? It's worship and floats details are in the back so if you want to ask us more it's it's a great time of praise and a great time of fellowship amen and then also real quick we're on our social media we're on facebook and youtube still waiting on rumble but uh, if you want to join us there at either one of those sites we would love to have you there like follow subscribe all that good stuff let's move forward with the giving of our tithes and offerings ushers if you like to come forward amen let us pray God, we glorify your name, not just in word, but God, let us glorify your name in deed. Let us glorify your name in giving. Let us glorify your name with all of our heart and all that we are, God, because we want to see your kingdom raised up in this dark world. We want to see you glorified. So God, we do that with a heart of giving, with a heart of love for our church to give as you've called us to. And Father, we, we pray for our pastor. Lord, the word that you have for him today, we know, Lord, that you're going to breathe on it. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would breathe on us, that you would change and shape and mold us. And Lord, let us start with intimacy today, God. Let us be changed today, God. Let us listen to the word that our pastor is bringing today, God, and that you would richly bless him as he serves us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And kids, you are dismissed officially for Children's Church. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we never want to be so stuck in our time frame. We never want to be so stuck in, in, you know, we have to, we have to get these things done by this time, this time, that time. We never want to be so controlled by our schedule that we miss out on what God is trying to do. And that's something that, that this house will be founded upon, um, is we go where Holy Spirit leads us. Amen. If he wants us to stop and focus on the needs of people, we're going to stop and focus on the needs of people. If he wants us to tarry a moment in his presence, we're going to tarry a moment in his presence. Amen? And if, if, if you end up staying past 12 o'clock because we're, we're diving into his presence, I'm sorry, you're going to stay past 12 o'clock. Or you can just get up and leave, but, you know, I'll be like, hey, we're not done yet. No, I won't do that. But when we are so controlled by our schedule, we miss out on what God is trying to do. We miss out on opportunities. We miss out on, on times where God can pour out his presence upon a situation. So never be caught up in your schedule. I know we talked about that a couple of months ago, that we cannot be so focused on our schedule that we miss out on the hand of God or a move of God. Amen? Amen. Another update that, that actually we didn't mention is we will be kicking up our small groups here soon, starting in October. I know Elder Mark has been diligently seeking God in in what um, the Holy Spirit is guiding him to Elder Marcus over our small groups. And he is bringing um, a, a lesson forward starting up in October that is going to be powerful. And I'm excited to hear that. And also to be kind of, kind of see where, where, I mean, of course I know where Holy Spirit's leading him, right? Him and I talk. It's not like I'm like, whoa, what's he saying? Right? But I'm excited about where, where the Holy Spirit is guiding Elder Mark in our small groups and the direction for that. 
So we'll kind of keep your ears open for that. We will be kind of bringing that out here within the next couple of weeks. Um, and this week we are closing up our, our Heart of Deliverance series today. And it's been a wild ride for a lot of us, right? A lot of us have found freedom in the midst of deliverance that we didn't know we needed freedom from. I know that we have seen in this church alone over 16 people set free from demonic oppression and demonic bondage. Set free from that, amen? And that is an exciting, exciting thing. And as we continue to dive into this, this is something that's going to be kind of the primary focus of, of one of the ministries of this church. Not only here, but also as we continue to go out into the community, also as we go out and continue to go out to where the people are, right, the lost, as we go out to where they are, this is also going to become a focal point of how we do ministry going forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. But, but I know that it's kind of shaken the foundations of some people. It's kind of shaken us up in other areas. But it's something that the world needs. Not only the world, but the church desperately needs to know freedom, that we can have freedom. And before we dive into God's word, I know I'm going to, let, let's hit our, our three stress points, right? Every time we, we've been talking about this, I've, I've said these three stress points because I need you to understand that what we're talking about isn't what other people will say we're talking about, right? So our stress points, Christians cannot be possessed, okay? Christians cannot be possessed. They can be oppressed, okay? That's our first stress point. The second stress point is Christians can have a demon, but a demon cannot have a Christian, okay? You can open a doorway into your heart, into your life, to allow something in to control that area out of our arrogance, out of our disobedience, right? Out of not spending the time that we need to spend with Christ, right? We can open doorways to the demonic. We open those doorways. We give them power in that area. But a demon can never own a believer in Christ because we've already been bought by the blood. Amen? We've already been bought by the ultimate price. And our last stress point is Christ wants us to be free. That is the heart of deliverance is Christ wants us to be free because the word says that he has come to set us free that we may be free indeed. Amen? No longer bogged down with things that we think is just a thorn in our flesh or the things that we, we think we have to struggle with, that this is just part of my walk. No, it's not. Christ wants you to be free. Amen? So those are our three stress points. So let's dive first and foremost into our scripture this morning before we go into what our, our topic is. And we are going to be looking at Luke chapter 10. We're going to be focusing and staying, really camping in Luke chapter 10 today. And we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 3, and then jumping over to verse 17. But looking at Luke chapter 10, it starts off by saying this in chapter 10, verse 1. It says, After these things the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two by two before his face in every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, or then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And verse 3 says this, Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among the wolves. And then let's jump over to verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In verse 21. And in this hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, and I kind of I like that. I, I, whenever I call Angie babe, I'm always like, it's in the Bible, <laughs> right? I, I, it's in the Bible right there, right? But even so, Father, for so it seems good in your sight. So this morning, I want to continue to talk about our authority. That we have. And last week we looked extensively at the authority that we have in Christ, right? But today 
I want to talk and look specifically at our authority by our assignment. Authority by assignment. And if we look at the cha- chapter 10 in the book of Matthew, it says that Jesus sent out the 12, right? Now, if we look at the 12, we know that the 12 are, are, his, are his boys, right? They're, 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 the, they're the top dogs kind of in the realm of, of Jesus and in, in his followers. And we know that, that they're the big shots, right? And we know that according to, to, to Matthew chapter 10 and also Luke chapter 9, that he sent them out, the 12 out two by two as well, with authority and with power. And he says, as you go, I want you to go and I want you to preach the word of God. I want you to heal the sick. I want you to raise the dead, and I want you to cast out demons. That is the authority that I have given you, is what Jesus told the disciples in Matthew chapter 10. And what I kind of find amusing and funny is that is, is even though they had all of this, this authority that has been granted to them, they still struggled at times to cast out demons. We see that in Luke chapter 9, right? With the boy who's afflicted with the, heavy, with the spirit, the father brings the boy to the disciples and says, hey, you need to cast the demon out, and they can't do it, so they take him to Jesus. And Jesus is like, oh, you unbelieving people, right? And then he cast out the demon and gave the boy back to his father. See, they had the power to cast out demons, but struggled at times with deliverance. Now, the 70 were sent out. We don't know anything about who the 70 were. We don't know their names. We don't know where they were from. We don't know their genders. We don't know anything about them. Now, we know that, that, that Stephen was considered, he's thought to be part of the 70. Stephen was the first martyr, right? We know that, that um, Barsabbas and, and Matthias, the two who, who the disciples cast lots to take Judas' spot to fill that, that 12th position, we assume that they were part of the 70 as well, just because Peter says they have been with us for a long time. So we can assume that these men were part of the 70. But it, we don't know anything about who the 70 was. And as we continue to look at the 70, Jesus calls them babes in verse 21, right? And in verse 3, he says, you are as lambs. So we know that the 70 had to have been young people, like young Christians. They weren't really taught a lot of what um, Jesus had taught the 12. He was sending them out as kind of just, just people who said, hey, just go out and do this. And he sent them out with only two instructions to do. Go out and preach the word of God, right? Preach the coming of God. And if they're hit, sick, heal them. That's all the authority that the 70 got in that moment. But what I love about the 70 is when we look at this, and, and this is going to be our focus this morning, is that when Jesus sent them out to 70, he never gave them power over demons. He didn't give them the authority to cast out demons. He said, preach my word and heal the sick, right? That's the authority that that he granted them. He didn't grant them authority over the demons. He sent them out ahead of of him to prepare the people. They did not go ahead of Jesus to cast out demons. They did not go ahead of Jesus to do that, but rather they went out to do their assignment that God or that Jesus had given them. Now, this is the key right here, because in the midst of completing their assignment, right, As they were walking out their assignment, authority kicked in, okay? As they were being obedient to what Jesus had told them to do, and as they were walking out, see, they didn't go out looking for demons. They went out for the lost. They went out looking for the lost, and as they were fulfilling the assignment that Jesus Christ had given them, authority was granted and released within them, amen? So I want to talk to you this morning not to focus on your authority in Christ, Don't focus on the authority that you have in Christ. Focus on the assignment that Christ has given you. Amen? Focus on what he has called you to do because when you walk in that assignment, you walk in his authority. You walk in the authority that he has given you as you walk out the assignment and calling in your life. Amen? When you walk in your assignment, you walk in authority. So I want to look this morning at four areas. I'm going to try to hit these quickly. But you already know. This is kind of like a, a, a thing lately that you're not going to get out before noon, okay? And that's okay. But I want to look at four areas this morning in Luke chapter 10, looking at our authority as we walk in our assignment. So number one, walking in the assignment is where authority is found. Walking in the assignment is where authority is found. 
Now, you could be saying this morning about yourself that, you know, my name is not known anywhere. Right. I'm a new believer. I'm, I'm still a lamb. Pastor, I'm, I'm I'm not a sheep yet. And I say that because when Jesus sent out the 12, he says, I send you out as as sheep among wolves. But as he sent out the 70, he says, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Right. So we already know that the disciples had more of a standing in that they were more mature. You can say, Pastor, I'm not that mature in the word. I don't know the word of God. I'm, I'm not I'm not good enough. Right. To walk out the assignment. I'm not good enough to walk in the authority. I'm not I'm uh, pastor. I, I'm not I'm not bold enough to lay my hands on people. I'm not bold enough, right? I, I, I don't think, I just don't feel like I have the authority. But that doesn't matter. Because if you commit yourself to the assignment that Christ has placed before you, if you commit yourself to the assignment in Jesus, you will have the authority in Jesus. Last week we already talked about that the moment you accept Christ into your heart, you are filled with the Holy Spirit in that moment. Not the baptism of the Spirit, but you're filled with the presence of Holy Spirit. And in that moment, you have the authority. It says that we are seated in Christ in heavenly places, right? We looked at that last week. But if you commit yourself to the assignment, you walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how much you know of the Word of God. It doesn't matter how much you feel about yourself. You are walking in the authority and the calling that Christ has on your life. Amen? So, Verse 20 of Luke chapter 10 says this. Luke 10 verse 20 says, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. See, the Bible does not mention the names of the 70, but Jesus said that their names are written in heaven. It doesn't matter how well you are known. It doesn't even matter your reputation. I know, looking at the life of my father, my father growing up, when people found out that he was a pastor who he went to school with and who knew him in his 20s, they were shocked and said, how are you a pastor? Right? I knew you when you were peddling drugs. I knew you when you were high on the stage playing in bars. They knew him. It doesn't matter how they knew you. It matters how you are known in heaven in that moment. Amen? The 70s. Their names weren't mentioned, but Jesus said their names are written in heaven. Even if no one remembers your name. Even if, if, if no one ever remembers the kindness that you show to them. Your name is still written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name is known in heaven. Amen? Amen. And I'll say this, I've said it before and I'll say it again, that your spiritual maturity does not increase your authority. Your spiritual maturity does not increase your authority. How well you know the Word of God does not increase your authority. Amen? We have to know where our authority comes from, and there's two areas that our authority comes from. And these two are going to be up on the board. Our authority comes from two areas. Number one, it comes from our relationship with God. Our authority is found in our relationship with with God, and the second area that our authority is found in is our obedience. Our obedience to God. So our authority comes from relationship, and it comes from obedience. And yes, don't get me wrong, it's, it's good to know the Word of God. Okay? Don't say, well, pastor said I don't really have to know the Word of God to walk in. No, you have to know the Word of God. Okay? Because you're going to be coming up a time where you have to speak the Word of God. You have to know the Word of God. If this is our foundation, if this is what we walk in, if this is what we live by, we need to know what we live by. Amen? We need to know the words of God. So don't say, well, Pastor, you don't have to know. You need to know the Word of God. But there's something that's so amazing when a lamb, when, when a baby in the Spirit, when a new believer rises up and says, Lord, I'm going to go out and tell the world who you are, not because of what I know, but because I know who you are. Amen? That's why I love so much the testimony of Krista. And this, this Wednesday, actually, Krista's going to be bringing a, a, the word on Wednesday night. And if you don't know anything about her past, she's the one who, who, who came and said, I want to give my life back to God. I want to totally turn away from paganism. And she's going to be speaking Wednesday night, sharing her testimony, sharing the word that God has laid on upon her heart. But it's exciting when somebody touches Jesus. They don't know the word of God. They just know how powerful God is. Right. Right? And they go out and they start saying, and if you, don't, you don't have to know powerfully the Word of God by heart. You have to know who Jesus is. 
Amen? But you also have to continue to know the Word of God. Okay. Now, the 70, they were obedient to what Jesus told them to do, and they were surprised. Right? The Word of God tells us that they were filled with joy. They were saying, God, you didn't send us to do this stuff, but this stuff found us. Right? I love that in that. They didn't wait for the apostles. They didn't wait for Jesus. They didn't wait for the pastor. They didn't wait to all that stuff. They didn't seek out the deliverance team when it was in front of them. All they knew was the name of Jesus. And they were walking in the obedience that God has called them to do. And they were able to cast out demons because of their obedience to the will of God. When we commit ourselves to God's purpose, to His will, God's purpose will find us as we walk. It will find us as we walk. And if you're here this morning, you're saying, I just don't feel like I have the authority. It feels like I'm just oppressed. It feels like I've, I've lost my authority. I have a question for you this morning. Have you stepped out of God's assignment for your life? Have you stepped out of the call that He has placed on your life? Have you focused on walking out other things over God's will for your life? Because God's purpose, God's plan, always provides a covering over you. It always provides protection over you. But the moment you step out of that will is the moment you separate yourself out of that umbrella. Amen? See, a Christian automatically has God's authority upon them. An example of this would be if we look at police officers, right? If we look at a police officer, just because the police officer doesn't have his badge or his gun, does that mean he's any less of a police officer? No, he still walks in the authority that has been granted to him as a police officer, right? So he still walks in that authority. He still walks in all of that. And even though they don't have the articles of their uniform, they still carry that authority. It'd be something different if I were to go out, if I were to go on eBay, if I were to go purchase the articles of a police officer, right? I, if, if I go onto Amazon and you, you, can, you can find, if you're looking for something, you're going to find it, right? I can find exact replicas of a police officer's uniform. I could put on those things and I can go out and I could try to impersonate a police. It's against the law, right? First and foremost, it's against the law to try to impersonate a police officer, Right? I could put on all the airs and all the things of that, but it's, I still don't have the authority of a police officer. And when we impersonate the spiritual, when we step out of the will of God and try to impersonate the spiritual or impersonate that authority, it still has the same ram- ramifications if, if I were to go out and try to be a police officer, right? It's against the spiritual law. And we see this with the sons of Sceva. I love, I, I love this story about the sons of Sceva, but let's look real quick at Acts chapter 19. We're going to look at 13 through 16. In Acts chapter 19, verses 13 and 16 says this. Then some of the, in, the interrent Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had spi- evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the, G- by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them and says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I recognize. Right? But who are you? Who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit, who who was the evil spirit, leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. See, it's not that you have to be perfect. You just have to be obedient. It's not that you have to be perfect, but you have to be connected in your obedience to Christ because authority is found in our obedience. Okay? We can't live how we want and still believe we carry the authority. You can't live however you want and still believe that you can move in those things. Okay? Are you hearing me there? It would be like me walking out out here in the middle of the street and, and telling the, the people to stop in the middle of the street and saying, stop, I'm a police officer, right? We don't have that authority to do that. You don't have the authority to move and believe however you want just because you think it's so. You have to walk in the will 
of God. And in the spiritual realm, they only recognize one man. So I love what the demon said. Jesus, I know. I know Jesus. I recognize the name of Paul, but I have no idea who you are because authority is only found in one man. Authority is found in the name of Jesus only. Amen? And to walk in that authority, you have to have a relationship with him and walk in the obedience of what he has called you to walk in. Walk in the authority that you have in the will of God. Amen? Number two. This one's not very fun. But walking in authority attracts attacks. Walking in authority attracts attacks. A lot of times we we, we don't really like to think about being attacked. But Jesus has plainly told us time and time again that, hey, if you walk out, you're going to come under attack. You're going to experience trials. You're going to experience hardship. You're not going to have a life of rainbows and roses, right? And I've said this a lot of times before, that that is, I believe, one of the injustices that the church has done to new believers is make them believe that the moment you come to Christ, everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be fine. That's not the case at all. Now, you will have peace that surpasses understanding. You will have joy, the joy of the Lord, that joy that is only for Christians and believers in Christ, right? But you're still going to face stuff. You're still going to go through stuff. And Jesus here says in Luke chapter 10, verse 3, he says, Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Wolves, right? Plural, not wolf, but wolves. And I want to actually correct something here this morning about this portion of Scripture because tradition has taught us that as Jesus sent these these people out among wolves, that wolves means the enemy, right? We've all kind of been taught that 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 the wolves meant Satan. That's not at all what Jesus is saying. Jesus isn't saying I send you out among the enemy. What he's saying is I'm sending you out among wolves. And the wolves, I'm telling you right now, is not Satan. We'll get into that just in a second. Because Jesus later on tells us that we are lions, right? He says that, that, that we're going to trample upon snakes and scorpions. So who are the wolves? Let's look at who the wolves are. And we're going to have the, a portion of Scripture surrounding them on, on the end of this. But the first wolf that we come against is the government. Okay? This is found in Matthew chapter 10, verse 18. Another wolf is society. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Your family is the third wolf. Matthew chapter 10, 21 and 22, and also 34 and 36. And religious institutions, right? Matthew chapter 10, 17, and these are going to be up on the board. So why are these wolves? Why are these considered wolves? Because when they attack you, it hurts, right? When you get attacked by these things, it hurts. And it's not a fun thing to experience these things. Because if we look at the life of Jesus, who attacked Jesus? Who attacked Jesus in that moment? The government? Society? His own family? When they were saying, oh, he's just crazy. We need to take him home now. Right? We need to, we need to get him out of this place. And also, religious institutions. They constantly attacked Jesus. Amen? Jesus is saying here that as we walk in obedience, that we don't fight back against the wolves. He sends us out amongst the wolves, not that we fight them. We're supposed to walk in innocence and in wisdom. We don't fight spiritual warfare naturally, right? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says this. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. See, we don't fight back against our family. Because the moment we become Christians, a lot of times, a lot of us face stuff, well, you joined a cult, 
right? Well, you're, you're walking blindly. You're, you're part of those holy rollers. They don't truly understand the word, <laughs> right? We get attacked constantly by society. The moment we take a stance against homosexuality, well, you're, 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 you're homophobic, right? And as our response to those people, we don't fight from a position of retaliation against the wolves. We don't fight from a position of retaliation. What we do is we fight from a position of peace. And we fight from a position of love. Amen? And as he sent these people out, that's how they did. But when we receive those attacks, we respond with the Spirit of Christ. And we shouldn't be discouraged by this, but rather we should rejoice because when we look at the life of Christ, he was constantly attacked by those things. So if you are being attacked by those things, rejoice. Amen? Rejoice in the fact that you are facing opposition. Rejoice in the fact that you are facing attacks. And I want to encourage you this morning that never to stop being a lion just because you're a lamb. If you're being persecuted because of your obedience, rejoice in that. Amen? Rejoice in the obedience that you have or that you're walking in. Stand upon his word. Because we are lambs in the physical, but we are lions in the spiritual. Verse 19 in Matthew chapter, or in Luke chapter 10 says this. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy that nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, we're lambs when we go out and when we are sharing the word of God. But we are lions in the spiritual. Because lambs don't trample on serpents and scorpions. And of course, when it says serpents and scorpions, it's talking about demons. It's talking about the demonic, right? It's not talking about actual snakes and scorpions. It's talking about the ways of the enemy. Because it says you trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, right? So we don't trample upon them as lambs. We do it in the authority of Jesus Christ. The authority that we have in his name. That is what we move in. We move um, in the name of Jesus, right? But we love as Jesus loved. We move as Jesus moved in the physical. But in the spiritual, you're not a lamb in the spiritual. Because you carry behind you the very name of Jesus. Amen? Lions trample on snakes, not lambs. So stop saying that I'm under attack because of this and because of that. Right? Stop saying that. Oh, I'm just so tired of the attack. I'm just so, I'm just so tired of this. Because we have this thing, okay? We have an article of our armor that we are equipped with. This thing is called the shield of faith. We equip ourselves with the shield of faith. What is that faith in? In the words of Jesus. In the very word of God is where we find our faith in. So we don't trample in those things. We don't say that, oh God, I'm just, oh. Pastor, I'm such under such an attack. I'm just tired of these fiery arrows. Where's your shield? Where's your armor at? Have you equipped yourself with the armor of God? Because Jesus clearly states in verse 19 that nothing by any means, put that verse up, nothing by shall hurt you by any means. Do we believe in the word of God? Do we believe in what he has said? Are we standing firm upon what he has said? If we have equipped ourselves with a word of, with a shield of faith, if we have equipped ourselves, and if you are still saying, I'm just so tired, I'm so tired, I'm so tired of the attack, is there a crack in your armor? Have you not equipped yourself? Have you not equipped yourself? It says that we will trample, that we have been given, given the authority to trample on serpents and, and scorpions, not to lay down and to take their bites. Not to lay down and, and take their hits, but to trample on them. And if we stand upon the word of God, and if we believe in the name of Jesus, use the name of Jesus. Use the name that has been given to you. Amen? It doesn't mean that you won't be attacked. You are going to be attacked. But we don't have to live in the midst of the attacks and be defeated. We don't live in the attack. We battle from a place of victory. Amen? Amen. Verse 18. 
And I want to kind of point something out about verse 18 as well. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. When we look at this verse traditionally, a lot of people will say, well, that, that, that's Jesus saying that as, as, as he was in heaven, that he saw Satan fall at the fall of, of Satan, right? When Satan fell from heaven. You want me to tell you something? That's not at all what that means. That's not what that means even a little bit. What Jesus is saying here, and I, I get so excited about this, because when we understand the word of God, when we understand what he's saying here, because who is he talking to? Who's Jesus talking to in this moment? He's talking to the 70, right? As the 70 came back and they were filled with joy, and he says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Jesus was watching in the spiritual that as the 70 walked in obedience of what he had called them to do, as they walked out their obedience, as they walked out the assignment set before them, as they started advancing into the kingdom of hell, as they started advancing, Jesus was saying, I saw Satan falling like lightning. Because as you walked in obedience, as you used the name of Jesus, my name was overpowering the realms of the enemy. My name was overpowering those things. And as you walked in obedience, Satan was falling because you were taking ground back from him. He saw Satan falling because these men and women were walking in obedience to what he had called them to do. He was walking in obedience to the name of Jesus. And as they used the name, as they healed the sick, as they testified to the goodness of Jesus Christ, as they talked about the kingdom of heaven is near, and as they took authority over demons and cast out demons, Satan's authority was falling in that moment. Because they understood in that moment the authority they had in the name of Jesus. Amen? They understood it. When we start to exercise the authority in the name of Jesus, the enemy loses influence in the areas when the lambs start taking the authority that they have in Jesus Christ. Do you need a victory in your life? Take authority in the name of Jesus. Take authority in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Number three. Number three. Bring joy, Jesus joy by walking in his authority. Bring Jesus joy by walking in his authority. And these last two points I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit quickly. But we bring Jesus joy by walking in his authority. Verse 21 of Luke chapter 10 says this. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. And don't worry about the door opening and closing. We're, we're dealing with something that's going on out there, okay? But in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father. He rejoiced, meaning he has joy. Right? Our God is a joyful God. He's not some God who's, who, who's going to tear off the roof of the church and squash us like a bug if we're evil. Right? Or if, or, or if we've sinned or if we've fallen. That's not who our God is. Our God is a joyful God. In fact, we find p- portions of Scripture that tells us that He rejoices. So our God rejoices. Let's look at some of the things He rejoices over. Our God rejoices in His works. Go ahead and put that up there. Our God rejoices in his works. This is found in Psalms 104, 31. Our God rejoices over his children. Deuteronomy 39. Our God rejoices over salvation. Luke chapter 15, 6 and 7. Our God rejoices over Jerusalem. Zephaniah 3, 17. See, but there's one thing that gives Jesus joy. Now, who knows that there's a difference between joy and rejoicing? But something that gives Jesus joy, that fills him with joy, is when his people start walking in obedience. Is when his people start walking in the authority that he gave them. That that when we start stepping and standing upon his will and move in his will, believing that what he said is true, that brings him joy. 
when we walk out the calling that he has placed and called in our lives. That brings Jesus joy. When we walk into the authority, when we rise up, brings a smile to Jesus' face. Faith, face, excuse me. And what's amazing about this portion of Scripture is that it shows the authority that we have. That this authority that we have is a lifetime authority. It's not something that we get for a season. Now, He will give you things for a season. He'll give you an anointing for a season for a specific task, right? But the authority that we have in His name is found in His name at all times. And as we walk in the authority that He has given us, as we move in the authority that He has given us, in the name of Jesus, that brings our God joy. Amen? Number four, and the last thing we're looking at this morning, is the name of Jesus is exclusive to believers. We belong to an exclusive club. Exclusive not by choice. Because the Word of God tells us that God desires that all shall come to the saving knowledge of who He is. Right? But the name of Jesus is exclusive to believers. Mark chapter 16, 17 and 18, verses 17 and 18 says this. These signs will accompany those who believe. Or who believe, right? That in my name, They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. This portion of Scripture doesn't say those who want to, right? It doesn't say those who who think they should be able to do these things will do these things. But it says those who believe. Believe in what? Believe in Jesus Christ, who follow Jesus Christ. In them, the name of Jesus happens too. Listen, all the time, every time I get into my car, going back to the example of a police officer, there are so many times where I want to pull people over so bad. <laughs> right? As you're driving down the road, there are times where you're going, go. Why is there never a police officer right beside me when this idiot starts driving past me going 35 and then like a 12, I don't know, right? That's actually a horrible example of speeding. Going like 150 and an 80 right down the freeway. That's a better example. There's always those times where you just were like, I wish, I wish I was a police officer right now. I could just pull them over right now and show them that, oh, you're getting a ticket. I don't even care who you are. You're getting a ticket, Right? But, what, but we don't have the right to act in that authority. We don't have the right to act in that authority. Just because you wish, just because you want to, just because you desire to, to walk in that authority belongs only to those who believe. It's only to those who believe. This is exclusively our right, exclusively given to us. His name is given to us as believers in Christ. Use that name. It's not a magical name. It's not, it's not a gimmick that we use to try, to try to win people over, right? It's not something that it's a gimmick or, or something to, 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 to just use and show off. But when we're walking in obedience, it's the name of Jesus that brings healing. It's the name of Jesus that delivers people. It's in the name of Jesus that we are saved. We have the name of Jesus. Why aren't we using it more? Why aren't we using it more? I love my, I love my brother John back here. That, that people will say to him, as you talk to him, that people will say to him, well, you have, you have the gift of, of healing. And he's like, no. I just walk in obedience, and I know the name of Jesus. Right? If we walk in obedience, and we know the name that is above every other name, when we walk in the name of Jesus and use the name of Jesus, that is what changes lives. That is what brings freedom to people who desperately need freedom. That is what gives people release when they desperately need release. 
It's not the name of Pastor Jake. It's not the name of, of Brandon Cook. It's not the name of any deacon or elder. It's in the name of Jesus that people are healed, that people are set free, that people find salvation. And that is a name that's been given to his people, us, as believers, to use as we go forth. Amen? In the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Every attack will end. I say that again. If you're experiencing attacks and you're just going, Pastor, I'm under attack, use the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. And that name is ours. We carry the name of Jesus. So if you're saying this morning, Pastor, I just don't, I don't feel like I have, or I am, I, I'm walking in authority. Are you walking in the will of God? Because if we walk in the assignment that Christ has given us, we walk in authority. We walk in his authority. Saying, Pastor, I'm just under attack. Use the name of Jesus. Use the tools and the weapons available to you. And I guarantee you, the more you use the name of Jesus, the more he's going to reveal his power and his authority through you. Amen? Amen? Stand with me this morning. I'm excited because this closes out our, our lesson and our, our series of, of Heart of Deliverance. Next week, we're actually going to be diving and starting a new series called What are the Foundational Truths? And next week, we're looking at salvation and baptism. And I'm going to show some stuff about baptism that in the church that, that we've been doing completely wrong. Amen? But come prepared and excited for that. But for right now, Let's go ahead and go before God. Father, you are holy. You, God, are good. Mighty and exalted highly is your name. You are the one who is worthy of all praise. You are the one who is worthy of all honor. You are the one who is worthy of all things. Because, God, you are holy and mighty. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. And Father, I just ask, I declare right now, Holy Spirit, that as we step out of this place, that we step into the will that you have placed for us. And if we don't, excuse me, and if we don't know what that will is, Holy Spirit, start revealing that will. And if you're, and if you're here saying this morning, I'm, t I'm talking to somebody, if you're saying, I don't know what that will is, yes, you do, because you've already been told that will. Jesus said to go into the people, to go out. So if you're saying, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, just go out. Go where the people are. Go where they are. You pray for them. And the Holy Spirit will start revealing to you the call that he has on your life. But if nothing else, be obedient to going, first and foremost. If you want to find a place to start walking in his authority, go to where the lost are. Because Jesus told us, go into all the world, preach the good news, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. That is what we're called to do. Amen? But Holy Spirit, start and ignite within us that fire and that desire to no longer sit idly down, to no longer focus on Sundays only, but Holy Spirit, that we walk this walk with you 24-7. That we walk every day, every minute, every hour, we are walking in the will and the call that you have placed before us. We don't get to choose to stop being believers because we're believers full time. So Holy Spirit, stir that desire within us. Stir that desire within us to seek first your kingdom. To move first in your authority. To understand that we are not beaten down people. But we walk with the very name of Jesus behind us. We stand with the very name of Jesus behind us. That we are trampling over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And we stand firm on the fact that nothing in that moment can hurt us because that is what, what your word says, Jesus. That is what you have said 
over us as believers. And Jesus, as we walk in obedience, that you are filled with joy. The Holy Spirit, ignite within us once again that desire to go out, to walk out our calling. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that every person here under the sound of my voice, present in the building and present online, that Holy Spirit, right now, you fill them up with a, such of a passion and a desire to preach your word, to go out to where the people are, to see salvations happen, to see lives changed, Holy Spirit. We impart right now in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, that you fill them up with boldness. They already have boldness, but Holy Spirit, bring that up. Bring it up and bring it out right now in the name of Jesus. Fill them with the knowledge that we don't walk defeated, that we walk in authority in the very name of Jesus. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. And we just declare and decree these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen and amen. Amen. I want to encourage you that if you need prayer for anything, go ahead and meet us up here at the altar. If you need to go, you can go. But go with God. Amen? Amen. Tell someone you like and you love them too.